The scripture today speaks about shepherds. There are good shepherds and bad shepherds. Good shepherd, Jesus Christ himself is a good shepherd. And the bad shepherds we have seen in the first reading, Prophet Jeremiah is speaking about bad shepherds, the shepherds of Israel. They are misleading and scattering the sheep. And God is going to punish them. And God himself will take care of the sheep. God will raise up a shoot from David and he will be the king and that is Jesus Christ. The bad shepherds, we know, they mislead and scatter the sheep. They don't take care of the sheep. They don't protect the sheep. <clears throat> they don't feed the sheep. <clears throat> they are not worried about the sheep. If, if one sheep is missing, they have no problem. If 99 sheep out of 100 are missing, they have no problem. They are worried about themselves, not about the sheep. They are the bad shepherds. And the good shepherds we find in Jesus himself. He is a good shepherd. There are some important qualities you find in a good shepherd. A good shepherd loves the master and the sheep. A good shepherd is, will protect the sheep. A good shepherd will sacrifice everything for the sheep. A good shepherd will sacrifice his time, his energy, everything, even his life. He's ready to sacrifice for the sheep. Another most important quality of a shepherd is a good shepherd will feed the sheep. A good shepherd will feed the sheep. You know, when Jesus was raised from the dead, in John chapter 21, he appeared to his disciples and he asked uh, Peter, Peter, son of John, do you love me more than this? Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. Then he said, Feed my lambs. Again he asked, and Jesus said, Tend my sheep. Again he asked, and he said, Feed my sheep. The responsibility of a good shepherd is feed the sheep. What does the shepherd feed? Feed the bread. That is the Eucharist. Feed with the word of God. That is the scripture. Now in the gospel we have seen when Jesus and his disciples, they were tired. You know, the disciples were sent out to preach two by two in different towns and villages. And they came back to Jesus and they were explaining everything. And they were See, they, they were seem so tired, and Jesus was alone, and he was also tired. So he said, let us go to a deserted place and take some rest. They want to take a day off, and they got into the boat. Why? If they, <clears throat> if they walk, then the people will know, and they will follow them. They will not give Jesus a rest. So they, they traveled by boat. But the people, they knew where they are heading. And they walked on foot and reached the place where Jesus was going. And from people from different towns and villages, they all gathered around. Thousands of people gathered around when Jesus got down from the boat. Jesus did not send them away. He did not say, we are so tired, we want to take rest, we want to take a day off, so you may go home and come tomorrow. He did not say. What did he say? He did start preaching them. 
He did not look into the health of his disciples. He did not look into the health of he himself. But he started preaching them the whole day without rest, without eating. The shepherd was feeding the sheep with the word of God. Now, look at the people. They traveled miles and miles on foot. They came from different towns and villages. Why? They want word of God. They want to listen to Jesus. They want to hear the word of God. So they traveled miles and miles. They spent the whole day with Jesus listening to the word of God. You know, they have their family. They have children. They have many things in, the, in their home. They have cattle. They may have sheep or goat or chicken. Many things they have in their house. They left everything because they were hungry and thirsty for the word of God. They were longing for the word of God. And they came to Jesus. They sat with Jesus, listening to him for the whole day. In, in Mark chapter 8, again we will see people were sitting and listening to Jesus for three days in the desert. In the desert, people were listening the word of God for three days without going home, without eating, without drinking. How they were thirsty and hungry for the word of God. Today, look at the people, look at the people in the church. Are they hungry or thirsty for the word of God? Are we longing for the word of God? Are we reading the Bible every day? Are we listening to the word of God every day? If not, we are not hungry and thirsty for the word of God. Why? Luke chapter 8, 12. Jesus was explaining the parable of the sower. The sowers went out to sow the seeds, and some seeds fell on the path. And the birds came and took them away. And Jesus explains, those are the people who listen to the word of God, but the devil comes and takes away the word of God from their hearts so that they may not believe and they may not be saved. The devil comes and takes away the word of God from our hearts so that we may not believe in God and we may not be saved. Today, if we are not interested in reading the Bible, if we are not interested in listening in the word of God, if we are not interested in hearing the word of God preached in the church, it is not our problem. The devil is inducing us. He wants to take away the word of God from our hearts he wants to take away our faith in God. He wants that we, will, we should not be saved. He wants all of us in his kingdom, in the kingdom of devil. And so he is inducing each and every one of us not to listen to the word of God, not to read the Bible. Dear brothers and sisters, just think about yourself. How much time we spend in reading the scripture in the Bible? Do we read the Bible every day? If not, then the devil is inducing us. Are we interested in listening to the word of God? Are we interested in hearing the preaching in the church? If not, the devil is inducing us because he wants all of us in his kingdom, not in the kingdom of God. So dear brothers and sisters, do not fall in the trap of the devil. Let us stop devil inducing us.
tempting us, testing us. Take the Bible, read the Bible every day. Listen to the word of God. If not, we will lose the eternal life. As Jesus said, the devil wanted to take away the word of God. The word of God is God himself. The word of God is God himself. If you don't have the word of God, then we don't have God in our heart. If you don't have the word of God, then we don't have faith in God. And then we will lose our eternal life. So let us hunger and thirst for the word of God. Let us long for the word of God. Let us spend time in reading the Bible and listening to the word of God so that God may dwell in our hearts and we will be saved. God bless you.